Hello, my name is Jonathan Hassan and for ETO's spring productions this year of Cozy Fantutti, uh, Julius Caesar and The Extraordinary Adventures of You and Me, I was playing First Horn. Of course these shows have now been cancelled and um, I wanted to first of all say how grateful I was um, when ETO said almost immediately that they would uh, be paying the fees of all the performers involved in these productions uh, for as many shows as they were unable to do. That was, um, it really was very generous. Um, I thought it would be nice to do a short video which ETO could use as part of their series that they're releasing, releasing uh, throughout the spring. And I wanted to say a few words about an aria which uh, features the horn prominently. Um, Act 1, uh, Scene 9 from Julius Caesar, Fatacito e Nascosto, uh, which translates as silently and stealthily. At this point in the opera, uh, Caesar has just been offered rooms in Ptolemy's palace, but he is convinced that he will be betrayed by his host, and in an aside to Curio, he compares himself to a hunter stalking his prey, in this case Ptolemyo. It's a fantastic metaphor for all the political machinations and uh, manoeuvrings uh, that have gone on through the centuries. And it's as relevant today uh, as it was in the 18th century, or indeed 2,000 years ago, when Caesar himself was still alive. Uh, this aria has a reputation among horn players uh, as being very tricky. And I thought it would be good to just investigate a little bit, a little about why it's so challenging. Uh, to start with, it's quite long and there are very few rests for the horn player. So there's an immediate, um, immediate demands being placed on stamina. Uh, coupled with this, uh, the instruments uh, that we played on this tour, um, for Julius Caesar we played a baroque horn of course, I've got one here. Um, and as you can see this is a very basic type of horn there are no um, valves no tuning slides um, and in 1724 when the opera was written uh, hand horn technique was really in its infancy a few players were using it but it didn't really become widespread for another 20 or 30 years so all the playing is done with the player's lip um, coupled with their, the airflow going through the horn so this this makes um, places quite high demands uh, on the lip and it's quite tiring. Uh, also many of the notes um, on the harmonic series which uh, this horn is limited to uh, are naturally out of tune. Um, if you see there are some holes here which we can use to uh, tune some of the more wayward notes in each key uh, but most of the tuning is done by the player's lip bending the note up or down to bring it into the correct pitch. Um, because of these limitations, composers uh, often limited their writing to the, the top of the harmonic series where the notes were close together. They had a greater scope of notes to work with, um, which gave them more opportunity for melodic writing. And so again, if you, if you look at Vartacito, it's mainly written in the top half of the stave. There are several trips up to a written top C, which is pretty near up in the upper echelon of the instrument. Um, and so again, that just places demands on the lip. Uh, all of these things, because they increase the workload on the lip, um, it's important to know when you're playing it, to know where to pace yourself and how to pace yourself through the aria. There are places where you can play in quite a relaxed style uh, and place where you really need to turn it on. And so it's important that as, as you work through it in preparation you, you sort of work out the points, the different points and how to pace, pace yourself throughout the, throughout the aria. Uh, the one other challenge that Vartacito presents to the player is that um, there's a long gap between the first time you play, the horns play in number one just after the overture, and then the rest of the horns disappear until the second half. The first horn has about an hour before he needs to come back and play Fartacito, uh, often in, pit, in 
theatres you can um, leave the pit and uh, find a dressing room, go to the band room, play a few notes. But there's a delicate balance between uh, keeping your lip flexible um, and not letting it cool down and, and not tiring it out so that you're ready to play the aria. Um, an hour is quite a long time to wait, um, so there's often a lot of mental chatter to, uh, to try and quieten down during that time. So, all things that you have to think about when you're, when you're approaching this aria. Um, despite all these challenges, Vartachto is very rewarding, both uh, emotionally and musically. Uh, in ETO's production this year, uh, when we did the Dar Capo each time, we tried to start it as quietly as possible. And um, that really um, emphasised the silent, stealthy sort of feel to the music, of the music. And the music that Handel's written has this wonderful sort of sinister, creeping quality which perfectly mirrors Caesar's words. You really feel that you're part of Caesar's message to Ptolemaeo, echoing his thoughts and his movements as he closes in on his prey. So there it is, uh, Vartachito from a horn player's perspective. Um, this video is dedicated to all um, the people who were involved in these spring productions, the singers, the technicians, all the administrative staff, um, all the people who, who work so hard um, to make these productions a reality every year. Um, they, everyone just does a fantastic job. Uh, to find out more about how ETO are supporting artists and keeping music in all our lives during the COVID-19 pandemic and how you can support those commitments, Please visit englishtouringopera.co.uk. Oh no, sorry, englishtouringopera.org.uk. Thank you.